Hi, this is Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. And what we're going to make, well, is a very large cake. This cake can be used, of course, for church socials. You want to make a wedding cake, a birthday cake, graduation. Well, if you need a large cake, this is going to be the one. Now, if you're looking for half sheet cakes, uh, Texas sheet cakes, I have them all. And I have many uh, on my channel from uh, yellow batter to white to red velvet to marble to chocolate. Well, some I'm even forgetting probably. So if you're looking for large party cakes, please check out my channel. Now, what we're going to be making is, and I want to show you the pan, it is a round um, uh, cake uh, pan. It is 20 by 20, and it is 2 inches tall. So I always get that question, and, and it's a good question. Uh, 2 inches, and this is 10, and this, I hope that you'll be able to see it, is the other 10 and you can see these pans they come together so they will make a 20 inch by 20 by 2 so it makes for a very large cake and I hope you I hope you can see those those pans okay now this recipe is going to be enough for you to make this whole cake okay with with these pans all right so let's set them aside for the moment okay heavily grease them and um, either dust them with um, with your flour or breadcrumbs or you know use your parchment paper whatever you prefer now this cake involves well quite a few steps and it does take some time but it's so well worth it so let's you know get the dry ingredients and um, get get them going and we'll set them aside. You're going to need uh, seven and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Now I will not have the recipe below uh, the video. I no longer do that. Um, if you have watched my videos, you know that. Um, for quite a while now, I haven't been doing that because so many people take my work just as so many other uh, YouTubers, uh, they take your work, take them to different uh, sites and claim them theirs, and it's just not worth it anymore. So um, I will go through uh, the directions, hopefully clearly, uh, that you'll be able to get them and write them down, okay? So again, seven and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You're going to put in three quarters of a cup I hope that you can see that. Let me move that in a little bit. Okay. Three quarters of a cup of cornstarch. And yes, I did say cornstarch. Now, I'll probably get questions um, about, well, you know, what else can I use for cornstarch? Well, I only make it with cornstarch, so I don't have an answer for you on that. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of stir it as I go along. All right. The next thing that you're going to be putting in is 12 teaspoons of baking powder. 12 teaspoons. Okay. And we're also going to be putting in one and a half teaspoons of salt. And I'm just giving it a good uh, stir. You can also mix it on your mixer if you want the dry, but I thought it'd be uh, easier. Do it just by hand with a wooden spoon. Okay, so the dry ingredients are ready to go and we put them aside for the moment. The next thing that we're going to do is you're going to need nine eggs, and I've had them at room temperature. You're going to need to slightly beat. Uh, these eggs. You don't have to beat them where, um, you know, for, you know, 10 minutes or anything like that. Just slightly, uh, slightly beat them. So I'm going to use my whisk. Now, if you want to use your hand mixer for this, feel free. 
This particular recipe though, you do need a stand mixer. I think it's way too large to try to attempt it with a hand mixer because of the seven and a half cups of flour. So, um, you know, if, if you're gonna make this big, you'll wanna have a, a stand mixer. But for jobs like this, your hand mixer works really good. So just beat in those eggs. And again, they don't have to be beaten where they're pale yellow or whatever, just so that they're, you know, they're blended, okay? The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be putting in milk. And you're going to uh, be using three cups of milk to your eggs, okay? And just stir that in or whisk it in or beat it in with your hand mixer, however you prefer to do it. Okay, and then you're going to be putting in vanilla. So you'll need six teaspoons of vanilla. Okay, and again, I'm just going to whisk it, get it well mixed. and we'll set it aside. Okay, what's gonna take the most time now is creaming the butter and the granulated sugar. So on the butter, you're going to need six sticks of butter. I went ahead and cut them into small pieces because I think it's easier for the video and it breaks up easier and creams. Um, it is soft because my, my kitchen is quite warm right now. Uh, but that's six um, sticks of butter, which is three cups, in case you're wondering about that. So let me start putting that into my mixing bowl here to get all that butter in there. This cake smells so good when it's baking in the oven. Um, okay, let me get all this butter out of here. Okay. Now, I'm gonna warn you about the sound of the mixer, and I'm gonna turn it up at a faster speed than I normally would, but I wanna move it for the video so it doesn't you know, keep you too long and bore you here. So I'm gonna start creaming it, but it's gonna be on high, so I wanna warn you about the sound. Again, um, I would be using a medium speed to do that. It probably take me three or four minutes uh, to uh, beat that. But again, because of the video, I raised the speed. Now I'm going to start adding the granulated sugar, and you're going to need six cups. So I'm going to use one of my measuring cups here just to start putting it in. Now you want the butter and the sugar to be very light and fluffy. So I usually time myself on a timer for about five minutes. Uh, it, you know, it could be a little less, it could be a little more. You'll want it very fluffy, very light, okay? But again, due to the video, I'm gonna, you know, move things a little faster. Warn you about the sound again. I try to put about a cup in at a time because that's what this um, measuring cup weighs. This is this is one cup. to this and get to the bottom a little bit you're going to see this mixture you know is quite um, large in volume so 
So let's go back to adding the sugar slowly and beating it to very light and fluffy. spend that time. This is about when I put my timer on of how long I beat it. But I do want to get the sides here and get to the bottom a little bit. I'm going to raise my speed a little bit so again warn you about the sound. pretty good as you can see okay it's pretty light and fluffy and pale in color pale yellow in color okay what we're going to do now is we're going to start putting in the dry and we're going to really bring it almost where it looks like um, crumbs okay and then we're going to start adding the um, the wet okay so let me get that out of there. All right, and again, I'm going to use my one cup spoon um, spoon here. Now, when your um, mixer starts to struggle a little bit, of course you you know raise your speed. Again, again, take the time, clean the sides, get to the bottom. Okay, as you see, it is making a batter. Okay, even though it doesn't have the liquid in yet. starts to bog down and you can see most of all the flour is gone this is when I start adding my liquid okay and I'm low put a little bit of liquid in I'm low Then I'm going to go back to my dry, and you see you're going to have to take your time with this because this is a big cake, you know, there's a lot of fun things that you have to mix, so. This cake, though, bakes up very light and moist. It's not a dense 
cake. It's not a heavy cake. Uh, you can use what any kind of frosting that you prefer. Okay, we're going to add some more of the dry. And a little bit of the liquid. The rest of the dry is in. Now the liquid a little at a time. Otherwise it'll kind of flood it and you won't like the mixture. You're able to raise your speed once you know it will, you know, fall everything over on the side. Add a little bit more of the liquid. You're going to have plenty of the liquid. Please don't think that you've done something wrong and it's not going to mix up. It really just takes time and some patience to make this cake. moments here I'm going to stop it and um, get to the bottom and the sides. Now you are going to preheat your oven at 325 degrees and this cake could take you anywhere from 45 minutes to 55 minutes. Um, I have baked it where it has come up in 52 minutes and there are days when I baked it, it took 58 minutes. So, you know, I use that guide that 45 minutes to 55 to even close to 60 minutes. It really depends on your oven. Because, um, you know, all our ovens set up so differently. So, you know, you do want to, you know, check it with a cake tester or a toothpick. Uh, that kind of thing. Now once you start to get that finish that liquid in there, then again on low just to keep it mixing. Only mix it till you know everything's combined. To tell you whether that's three minutes or four minutes, I'm not really sure. That I really don't time. It's probably on the side more of that three minutes uh, mark. But you know, you you it's your mixer, it's your speed of your mixer of what it can do, um, you know that kind of thing. I'm going to lower it at this time, and just try to get to the bottom here a little bit, and work those sides. Because in a moment I'm going to have to definitely turn it up because I've got to make sure that that mixture all the way to the bottom is combined properly. Now, what you also can do is to take a clean towel, cover your mixer, raise your speed if you're afraid that it's going to splatter or spill. And um, that's another way of handling it. It's really not that high that it's splattering. As you can see. Now, I'm going to raise the speed, so I'm going to warn you about the sound, and then I'll be almost done here. amazed sometimes how strong this mixer is yet I will tell you I have a 20 quart um, I actually work with two of these mixers I have two 
beside one more besides this and then I also have um, a Hobart uh, 20 quart which um, if you're familiar with the um, Hobart line that's a commercial uh, commercial line um, and I because I make a lot of uh, rolls so if you're ever looking for bread uh, videos and rolls uh, I like to use my 20 um, my 20 quart which is a very large one day I will do a video using my 20 <laughs> my 20 quart Hobart mixer when I make um, a lot of bread and sometimes I you know I'll make over 200 rolls um, yeast rolls so that is all equipment that I still have from my parents' restaurant catering business. So you can see, I'm going to bring it a little closer to the camera. I hope you can see this beautiful, satiny, silky batter that has come. I didn't overbeat it, but it's certainly not underbeaded. Uh, beaten. You'll want to wait till it becomes, you know, these nice ribbons. I don't know if you can see the ribbons of the, the batter uh, and that it's nice and smooth, okay? Now, what you might want to do is, I generally take, um, you know, a measuring cup and measure, you know, one to, one to this side, one to that, so that I know that I'm equaling them, that one pan doesn't, isn't larger uh, than the other filled uh, with batter. Um, you know that kind of thing all right now you can use a measuring cup or again you can I'm using my one cup and I do something similar to this and I just you know pour that in and then you know of course I would do the other one and so on so back and forth and whatever for right now I'm just gonna fill fill this up for you because I'm not gonna you know bore you you certainly know how to put um, batter into um, a pan but or just eyeball it you know you're you know if you feel comfortable knowing oh that's half you know ha I've taken out half and I need to fill the other and then again just Make sure that you get those um, those corners real well. You know the sides, and then I lightly tap it um, when um, when I'm done. But you can kind of eyeball how much goes in your pan because you've got two pans here to share your batter okay but again these are two inches and it's 20 by 20 round okay so we're going to set that aside and then i like to tap it 325 i know i mentioned that but bears repeating so let me get this out of the way rinse my hands quickly because i was working with raw eggs and i want to show you what it looks like once it's baked up Okay, now I know this was a long video, but this is, well, it's a pretty big cake and it takes a while to, um, to do this. Okay, there we go. I'm going to just step away from the camera here and grab it. And this is how it will turn out, okay? Um, of course, you're going to need um, to put frosting between the layers so that it'll act as a glue. Um, you know, that's uh, very helpful. I do suggest, though, once it comes out of the oven, uh, put it on a cooling rack until it's completely cool. Uh, what happened was basically this side um, was completely cool, and due to the video, trying to rush things a little bit, I have a slight crack here, uh, but again, that doesn't affect the, the taste of the cake or anything like that. Once you frost it, no one's going to know that, uh, but 
wait till it's completely just you know cold before you transfer it okay um and it just comes out a beautiful golden uh, uh a brown and very delicate um i will um let me let me move this out of the way i'll cut into it to show you but i do want to get these this these pants out of my way if I'm going to do that okay all right and let me and I hope that I hope that you can see that how beautiful and how large this cake is how big it is and it bakes up nice and tall it really does okay so I'm going to cut into it To show you okay it is an extremely moist cake it's delicate it it um, it really melts in your mouth and I'm gonna just squeeze on it to show you how I hope that you can see oh it, it just without even frosting this cake just smells so good you know you'd want to eat it plain or just with some powdered sugar on it and then i'll just show you the crumb how it flakes away how light it is how moist it is um you'll have you know it you have a nice um firm um uh, more of a you know a hard crispy edge and top which is nice because for me it makes it a lot easier uh, to uh, crumb coat it and then frost it but anyway again I hope that you can see me squeezing this how fresh and how delicate this cake is um, it, it really is I think a delicious cake uh, to make for you know uh, when you need a large cake for a party or church social or whatever you need the cake for uh, and it does freeze well I have uh, frozen this cake uh, without uh, frosting as well as with frosting and it really has held up uh, in my freezer for about about two months but again you really have to wrap it uh, very airtight and that type of thing um, uh, but I have I had a lot of good luck and a lot of success with this cake um, uh, freezing it um, okay so there you have it you've got probably this is the largest cake uh, that I made a video on uh, and I, I love doing the larger cakes so many of you have written to me and asked if I would do party size cakes so that's why I do have so many so um, if you try this recipe please leave a comment because I'd like to hear from you if you tried the recipe and you liked it there's another good reason if you have a moment to write to me I will respond to you in a timely fashion uh, I do ask you though to solely watch me on YouTube because that's the only place that I put my videos on and nothing is more frustrating is when I see my work on other sites people asking questions or have comments and I can't answer you that is frustrating so please watch me solely on YouTube I want to thank you for watching Diane love to bake um, if you are so inclined and you'd like to subscribe boy I'd really appreciate it give the uh, video a like or ring the bell any of that I really I can't tell you how much I enjoy putting these videos on and how much I appreciate every one of you that uh, take the time to write or even watch a few minutes of my video so thank you again for watching Diane love to bake on YouTube and I will see you soon